Hello and welcome to Young Turks, the show that puts the spotlight on two young achievers every week and takes you through their journey to success. I'm Shireen Bhan and joining me in Mumbai is Menika Doshi. Hi Menika. Thanks Shireen. My guest is a man who's made it big in one of the most competitive and difficult consumer markets in this country, Mumbai City. Nilesh Gupta is the man behind Vijay Sales, that's Mumbai's most famous and most successful consumer durables retail chain. You'll meet him in just a short bit from now, but right now it's back to Shireen. Thanks, Minka. My guest today is chilly hot. He's quite literally shot to fame. He's become the nation's latest poster boy. And no, he's not a cricketer, he's not a Bollywood superstar, and he's certainly not a politician. This was the moment that changed the life of a regular army man. Major Rajivarthan Rathor returned home a hero from Athens. The only medal winner for India in the 2004 Olympics. A sportsman at heart, Rathor does not believe in giving up. He took to the sport rather late in life but decided to make a go of it despite opposition from his colleague who thought he was jeopardizing his army career. Now with an Olympic medal under his belt, Rathor feels it's been worth it. For me to put everything into a perspective, into a few sentences now is very difficult because uh, a lot of uh, mental game goes on, a lot of uh, psyching up goes on and part of the psyching up was of course it's a question of do or die, uh, a feeling of uh, absolute shame in case I was to miss it. So what, what were the thoughts that were going through your head the night before, what were you telling yourself the night before the event? You really want to know that, no? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the night before I was telling that it's not a match tomorrow. My match is on the 18th. I was psyching myself up that tomorrow is not the match. And then finally a great sense of relief when you actually stood there and wore the medal? Oh yes. Uh, you know, when I was wearing the medal, I, I didn't know what was happening. Uh, the feeling of uh, pride was certainly there when the flag was, uh, the Indian flag was fluttering in the, in the backdrop of the, the Greek mountains. Um, uh, but there was a great sense of relief when I had won it, when I had shot my last bird mm. and I knew that we won a silver medal now so that was a great sense of relief that having worked for these many months, many years, having gone through the pressures has now I've accomplished and I look back in a symbolic gesture that okay this is yours now, you take on from here. Going back to you as a person, I believe shooting happened for you rather late in life. You were 28 when you finally decided to take up shooting as an event, but you've always been interested in sports, I believe polo, boxing, cricket, you name it. But why shooting? Why did you decide to then focus on shooting as an event? You see, I've, I've asked that question to myself as well, why shooting? Because it, it's, one of, it's a very odd sport compared to the other sports that I've always taken part in. There's always a lot of cheering, there's always this, uh, this open aggression towards your opponent and you were letting out your emotions, you were shouting and you were cheering up your, your teammates and here it was very different. Uh, there was silence <laughs> and uh, I initially felt very odd but then later I realized the, the entire turbulence if I can call it, the turmoil is not happening outside as in other sports, it's happening inside mm. and you need to be able to control that. How does all of this change you when you're, when you're off the range and at home, how does it change your perspective to life, how does it change you as a person when you're just just a regular guy and not somebody who's wielding a gun? Well, that's a great question because this sport has, uh, has uh, really improved me as a person. Um, I can't even state how but it has improved me tremendously. Gearing up for battle comes easy to Rathor. Being part of the army infantry, he's been posted to Kargil, Kashmir and the Northeast. Life on the shooting range isn't very different from being in the army. Discipline is still the key. A vigorous exercise schedule, strict diet control and lots of practice. That's typically what his day looks like. I would uh, continue to be a soldier. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm in the armed forces. I love the uniform. It's one of the best organizations India can have. It's, a, it's an organization that India can depend on, I can say that. Mm. As far as shooting is concerned, I would continue shooting. I have uh, 
I have a responsibility now in any case, not only towards uh, performing in my event, but also in trying to, uh, to if I can, motivate the youngsters, uh, get the spirit of Olympics back again. Just talking about you and the army now, there's going to be no major Rathor in Kargil or major Rathor in Kashmir anymore. So in that sense, your career would be limited within the army. No, I feel sad about that actually. Uh, I've, I've just lost one of my best friends in uh, Kashmir. So of course, there's this feeling of getting back there and uh, you know, taking them on again. But I think uh, my colleagues, my friends are doing that in any case. So is that, th is that something that you will now miss out on? Is that something that you regret that along with the kind of success that you've now found as far as shooting is concerned, there's another very important significant part of your life that you in a sense have to give up on? Yes, certainly. I've always uh, missed when my battalion was there uh, in East fighting the insurgents there. And when the soldiers used to come back home, they would write to me or they would meet me and uh, they would literally urge me to come back to the battalion. So I too feel a part of that team and, and literally feel like, I felt like it at, at, at a time before the Olympics to throw this all up and get back to the team that I was always with. Uh, but yes, I will miss that in any case. A national hero but a modest one. The past month has put the spotlight on him. He's not media shy or at a loss for words, but he's certainly embarrassed by all the attention. It's been almost a month now since the historic win has happened in a, in a sense and you've got cameras thrust in your face and microphones thrust in your face but you don't seem uneasy with it at all. I mean, you're in fact very, very savvy, the most savvy person that I've met in front of camera. No, I wouldn't put myself as savvy but uh, I think I'm just stating out the facts and, I'm, and that's why I don't feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to hide. I'm just trying to bring out what happened and what is likely to happen in the future. Well, now you, you've pretty much become a sort of hero as far as uh, the nation is concerned. <laughs> what is the definition of a hero? Who has given that uh, definition to you? Every, everyone's talking about you. Everyone's writing about you. Everyone's trying to interview you. But that's just, just because the Olympics is just over. It's Absolutely. natural for them to sure. ride. But, but th that's what I wanted to talk about. Are you seeing a lot of interest coming to you from advertisers, from corporates who suddenly want to sort of sign you up, want you to endorse their products? Is all of that happening? Yes. And, and have you bitten any contracts yet? Have you signed on any dotted lines yet? No. I mean, is there any particular you find reason? me answering in very short, crisp words on this because there are some things that I cannot state and I need uh, directions for mm. that. And in time it will come, so I'm just waiting for now that. I'm assuming the directions are really from the Army headquarters, but if that part of the issue was sorted out, would you be okay with uh, endorsing products, with being on television in different advertising, uh, advertising different products? I don't see anything wrong in that uh, as long as uh, if the sport gets a boost. So how many Olympic athletes are actually into advertisements and the fact is that when children watch uh, people on the television they try and follow them and if it's only a particular sport that is shown on the television there's nothing wrong in the children following that sport. You're also known as Chili Rathor now is that because you've got a fiery temper or why where do you get that name from? How did you get that impression <laughs> that I have a fiery temper? You don't seem like that which is why I wanted to ask you where Chili, chili came yeah, from. Chili is C-H-I-L-L-Y which means chilled out, cold or something. Well, I don't know. I won't tell you how exactly I got it, but um, it's been there since I was maybe five or six years old. Uh -huh. And uh, since my name, you know, I've always told my mom that why did you, even now I keep telling her, why have you given me this long name Rajyavardhan, you know, by the time people start calling me, I've already gone out of the room, you know. <laughs> so, but she says, well, she likes this name and um, so a lot of my friends don't call me Rajyavardhan, they just call me Chili. Uh -huh. And uh, even in the army, a lot of people call me chili. So even the, some of the soldiers call me chili, uh, chili sab or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> chili sab. <laughs> so it, it's chili, not the fiery one, but chili, the chilled out one that that uh, you really well, like like identified like with. I, I like to say that uh, at the right time, it's either C H I double L I or C H I double L Y. <laughs> okay. It is hot or cold at the right time. Well, he has hoping Major Rajavardhan Rathor keeps India's flag flying high in the Beijing Olympics as well. On that note, we'll take a break on Young Turks, but Menika will be right back with another young achiever, so stay right there.